Good day, students. Welcome to Keros Institute. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all on behalf of Keros Institute for this online tutorial for your diploma in airline and airport management. During the course of this tutorial, we will be emphasizing on the introduction to civil aviation and the following areas will be covered. Aviation history, civil aviation in India, Indian civil aviation governing bodies, aeroplanes, types, parts and manufacturers, ICAO, bilateral agreements and freedom of air, IATA offices, advantages and designators, airports and the different types of airports, airline, different categories of airline, airline products and distribution, 24 hours clock and universal time coordinate. We shall start with the introduction to civil aviation and understand what the aviation industry is. Firstly, what is aviation? Aviation or air transport is a science of flying. The activities include building of mechanical machines capable of flying and most importantly the manufacturing of aircrafts. What is an aircraft? Aircraft is any machine that can fly with the support of air. The world's first man-made machine that was capable to fly was a kite. There are various examples for machines that are capable to fly. As I said earlier, we have the kite, we have parachutes, we have hang gliders, we have helicopters, hot air balloons, and finally, our aeroplanes. We shall now move forward and take a look at the history of aviation. The first manned flight in the history took place on 21st November 1783. The two Mongolfa brothers designed and built a hot air balloon which travelled for five miles across the city of Paris in France. In 1804, Sir George Cayley, an Englishman who is regarded as the father of aviation, designed the first model aircraft, a glider that took to the skies in 1852. On December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers invented the first powered aircraft, which lasted for 13 seconds and covered a distance of 60 meters. Let's now enlighten ourselves on civil aviation in India. Modern civil aviation in India traces back to 18 Feb 1911, when the first commercial civil aviation flight took off from Allahabad for Naini, covering a distance of 9.7 kilometers, piloted by a French aviator, Henri Piquet, carrying 6,500 pieces of mail on a Humber biplane. This, in fact, is considered as the world's first official airmail service. Nothing serious happened with the Indian civil aviation industry for a period of over 20 years. On 15th October 1932, J.R.D. Tata flew a consignment of mail from Karachi in Pakistan to Juhu Airport in Bombay. In the year March 1953, the Indian Parliament passed the Air Corporation Act. India's airline industry was nationalized and the eight domestic airlines operating independently at that time were merged into two government-owned entities. Indian Airlines focused on domestic routes and Air India on international services. 
India is home to a total of 486 airports, which includes airstrips, flying schools, and military bases. Out of 486, 123 airports are with scheduled commercial flights. 34 of these airports have international status. Cochin International Airport is the world's first fully solar powered airport and in Kerala we have four airports of which all four have international status. Indian Civil Aviation Governing Body Under the Indian Ministry of Civil Aviation, there is a statutory body known as the Directorate General of Civil Aviation, DGCA. Under DGCA, we have the Bureau of Civil Aviation Security, who looks after all the security procedures of all the airports in India. Then we have the Central Industrial Security Force who provide security services to all the airports in India. And finally, we have the Airport Authority of India. Most of the airports in India are operated by Airport Authority of India. What is an aeroplane? As we have learned earlier, aircraft is any machine that can fly with the support of air and an aeroplane is also a machine that can fly with the support of air. The only difference being that an aeroplane has fixed wings. Aeroplanes can be classified into two main categories military aircrafts and commercial aircrafts. When we talk about military aircrafts, they are again classified into two as combat and non-combat. When it comes to commercial aircrafts, we have narrow-bodied aircrafts and wide-bodied aircrafts. Let us now understand the difference between the two types of commercial aeroplanes. Narrow body aeroplanes have single aisle whereas a wide body aircraft has double aisle. Aisle. Though it's written as A I S L E, the S remains silent and it is pronounced as aisle. Take a look at the picture given below, which shows the interior of the aeroplane's passenger cabin. On the left hand side, you can see three seats, a passage, and then followed by another set of three seats. The passage is used by the crew and passengers to move within the interior of the passenger cabin. In the aviation industry, this passage is known as the aisle and the six seats positioned on either side is called as six seats abreast. If you take a closer look at the picture on the right hand side, you can see three plus three plus three set of seats, which is nine seats abreast and two aisle between three set of seats. All commercial aeroplanes manufactured till date are either single aisle or double aisle. Therefore, narrow bodied aeroplanes have single aisle and wide bodied aeroplanes have double aisle. Narrow bodied aircraft, we have four to six passengers abreast whereas on a wide-bodied aircraft, we can have 7 to 10 passengers abreast. A narrow-bodied aircraft 
can carry 150 to a maximum of 250 passengers. In a wide-bodied aircraft, the passengers can go up to a maximum of 850 seats. The fuselage in a narrow-bodied aircraft is somewhere around 10 to 13 feet in diameter, whereas in a wide-bodied aircraft, the fuselage is 16 to 20 feet in diameter. Narrow-bodied aircraft is used for short to medium haul flights, whereas wide-bodied aircraft it is usually used for a long haul flight. When it comes to the loading of baggage and cargo on a narrow-bodied aircraft, it is loaded piece by piece and in the aviation industry we call it as loose loading. When we move on to the wide-bodied aircraft, baggage and cargo are containerized. It is loaded into containers and pallets which are called ULDs, Unit Load Device. We will be discussing in detail about ULDs that are used for wide-bodied aircrafts in the future. We shall now take a look at the different parts of a commercial aeroplane. The illustrated diagram you are looking at is a side-on view of a 747 series of aeroplane manufactured by Boeing. On the extreme left is a radon. This is where the antenna of the aircraft is concealed to protect it from inclement weather. Followed by the main deck and the upper deck of the aeroplane. There is the anti-collision warning beacon light. There is the ADF, automatic direction finding antenna. At the tail, is the vertical stabilizer, the main rudder and the rudder trim, followed by the wingtip, the engine mounting and the wheels of the aircraft. The body gear, main gear and the nose gear, collectively known as the undercarriage. Here is a bird's eye view diagram. Towards your extreme left, there is the cockpit or the flight deck, which is also known as the nose of the aircraft. And towards your extreme right, or rather the tail of the aircraft, is the horizontal stabilizer, the main elevator, APU exhaust, and the elevator trim. The cylindrical tube that runs from the nose to the tail of the aircraft is called the fuselage. Fuselage is an aircraft's main body section that accommodates the crew and the passengers on the main deck and the passengers' baggage, cargo and post office mail in the lower deck. The two fixed wings on either side of the fuselage and other important parts and components that includes the engines, flaps, winglets, pylons, ailerons, spoilers and speed brakes or air brakes are installed that allow the aeroplane to take off, cruise, turn towards the desired sides and finally land safely. The other parts and components shall be discussed in the future and now we need to focus on the fuselage. As we discussed earlier, commercial aeroplanes are built in two types, narrow-bodied and wide-bodied. Understanding the fuselage will help you to partly differentiate between the two differently bodied aircrafts. Let's move on and take a look at the major commercial aircraft manufacturers. Airbus and Boeing are the big players in the aviation industry who manufacture both the narrow-bodied and the wide-bodied aircrafts. 
Airbus is European, Boeing is American, Bombardier, Embraer, and ATR are all narrow-bodied aircrafts. Bombardier is manufactured in Canada, Embraer is Brazilian, ATR is again French. Let's also understand who the major aircraft engine manufacturers are. We have the GE Aviation, which is generally electric aviation. We have the Rolls-Royce and Pratt and Whitney. Though there are many aircraft engine manufacturers, these three are the key players when it comes to aircraft engine manufacturing. The International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. The International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, or ICAO, is the world governing body for civil aviation and was formed in 1944 at a convention in Chicago. ICAO is a United Nations agency with its headquarters in Montreal, Canada. Members of ICAO are governments of UN member states. The member governments have agreed on regulations and certain principles pertaining to civil aviation such as to ensure safety of flight in international air navigation, to provide safe, regular, efficient and economical air transport to standardize procedures and documents. These procedures are enforced on member governments through 19 annexes to ensure that the rights of contracting governments are fully respected and they have a fair opportunity to operate international airlines. Bilateral agreements and freedom of air. One of the main contribution of ICAO to the airline industry is regulating the air transportation between countries. This is based on nine freedom of air and bilateral, trilateral or multilateral agreements between countries which are negotiated, agreed and frequently documented. Let's now take a look at all the nine freedom of air. The first freedom, right of transit without landing, the right to fly over the territory of a country without landing there, which is otherwise known as overflying rights. Second freedom, right of non-traffic stop or technical stop, the right to make stops in the territory of another country for non-traffic purpose, example, fueling, maintenance, etc. Traffic right means a permission granted to an airline registered in another country to pick up passengers, their baggage and cargo and transport it to another country. The second freedom doesn't give that permission for airline to stop in a country and take passengers. They can only have a stopover for refueling or maintenance purpose. Third freedom, right to transport from nation A to nation B. The right to fly from one's own country to another country with traffic. The fourth freedom, right to transport from nation B to nation A, the right to uplift traffic from a foreign country to your home country. Fifth freedom, right to carry traffic between foreign territories, the right to carry traffic both ways from two foreign countries. Sixth freedom, right to fly between two foreign countries with stopover in home country, the right to fly 
between two foreign countries with a stopover in home country to uplift traffic. Sixth freedom, which is modified, right to fly to two places in a foreign country and proceeding to home country. The right to uplift traffic from two places in a foreign country before proceeding to home country. The seventh freedom, right to fly between two foreign countries by an airline from another country. The right to fly between two foreign countries with traffic, but the flight does not proceed to the home country. The eighth freedom, right to fly between two places in a foreign country with no traffic right from second place to home country. The right to uplift traffic from the first place to the second place of a country and proceed to home country with no traffic rights to uplift from the second place. The ninth freedom, the right to fly inside a foreign country. The right to fly inside a foreign country and the flight not proceeding to the home country. Freedom of air only applies to commercial aviation. The term freedom and rights is considered as a shorter way of referring to the type of international services permitted by an airline between two or more countries. Though such services are provided by countries, airlines may still have to face restrictions in assessing them due to treaties or for other internal reasons. Given here are illustrated examples of freedom of air which will help you to understand it better. International Air Transport Association, IATA. The International Air Transport Association, IATA, was established on 19th April 1945. IATA is an organization of international and domestic airline companies who have agreed on the setup of standards and recommended practices, also known as SAPs, to ensure safe, secure, and economical air travel, coordinated fares and rates, operation, traffic, technical, financial, medical, legal, and handling procedures, cooperation with ICAO and other international organizations. There are two types of members in IATA. We have the active members and the associate members. The active members consist of international airline and the associate members consist of domestic airline. IATA offices, the main office or the headquarters and the secretariat is situated in Montreal, Canada. The administrative and the clearinghouse is in Geneva, Switzerland. What are the advantages of IATA? Advantages of IATA to the traveling public. One ticket, one payment. Passengers can purchase a single ticket to travel on multiple airlines. Advantages of IATA to the airline. Settlement of accounts for interline revenue transactions between airline through IATA Clearinghouse in Geneva. Advantages of IATA to the government. Economic boost to travel and tourism. IATA Airport and Airline Designators. IATA Airport Designator, also known as IATA airport code or IATA location identifier is a three-letter code used for identification purpose for all airports and metropolitan cities around the world.
example mumbai b o m new delhi d e l cochin c o k dubai d x b chennai m a a iata airline designators also known as iata reservation codes are two character codes assigned to the world's airline all the airline codes are described in iata's airline coding directory example for air india it's a i for emirates it's e k indigo 6 e spicejet s g indian airlines i c air india express i x airport definition of an airport an airport is a restricted area for the movement of aeroplanes passengers their baggage cargo and post office mail or an airport is an intermediate point where people traveling by air change from the surface mode to air mode and vice versa an airport is also sometimes called an aerodrome an airdrome air field or air strip airports are divided into two land side and air side land side is open to the public and includes car parking sea of area and the receiving area air side is restricted area where the aircrafts land park and take off air side and land side is separated by the terminal building and the terminal building is also part of the air side where access is restricted to the general public types of airports airports are generally classified into four gateway international airport domestic airport regional airport general aviation and civilian entry gateway international airport is an airport with customs and border control facilities enabling passengers to travel between countries international airports are usually larger than domestic airports and often feature longer runways and facilities to accommodate the heavier aircraft commonly used for international and intercontinental travel international airports often also host domestic flights domestic airport is an airport that handles only domestic flights within the same country domestic airports do not have customs and immigration facilities and so cannot handle flights to or from a foreign airport regional airport a regional airport is an airport serving traffic within a relatively small or lightly populated geographical area a regional airport also does not have customs and immigration facilities to process traffic between countries general aviation or civilian enclave a civilian enclave is an area at a military air base allotted for the usage of civil aviation and flying clubs many reserve morning hours for military flight trainings airline what is an airline airline is a company that provides air transportation to passengers their baggage cargo and mail through air airline utilizes aeroplanes to provide these services and sometimes form partnership with other airline companies known as code share agreements there are three types of airline major airline 
national airline and regional airline. Major airline. They are the heavyweights of the industry and are often in the news. These airline companies generate a revenue of over 1 billion US dollars. As of 2019, the major airlines voted by travelers around the world are Qatar Airways, Singapore Airlines, Anna Nippon, Cathay Pacific, Emirates, Eva Air, Hainan Airlines, Qantas Airways, Lufthansa, and Thai Airways. National Airline. These are just one step below the major airline with an annual operating income under 1 billion US dollars. They serve regions of a country and some international destinations. They operate medium and large sized jets. Example, SpiceJet and Indigo in India. Regional airline. These airlines serve particular regions of a country. The airline companies operate aircrafts that can accommodate 60 to 80 passengers. Example, Alliance Air, Trujet, Star Air, Zoomjet in India. Airline products and distribution. What are airline products? Airline products are the passenger seats, the space for baggage, cargo and mail, and two packages. How do airlines distribute their products? There are two ways that airlines distribute their products. One is direct airline distribution and indirect airline distribution. Direct airline distribution, they sell through their city offices, which is closer to the airport through internet through the airline company's call center and e-ticketing through their app. Indirect airline distribution. Airline products are indirectly distributed through IATA approved agents and general sales agents. IATA approved agents sell the airline product through sub-agents who are small-time players in the industry. 24-hour clock. The 24-hour clock is a conversion of timekeeping in which the day runs from midnight to midnight and is divided into 24 hours indicated from 0 to 23. In the aviation industry, we do not follow the standard 12 hour clock format. We follow the 24 hour clock format. We don't use AMs and PMs. Instead, there are examples given below. For 12 AM, we use the word midnight. For 1 AM, we say 100 hours. For 2 a.m., we use 200 hours. For 12 p.m., we say 1200 hours. For 1 p.m., we use 1300 hours. And for 11 p.m., we use 2300 hours. For example, the time is 5.49 p.m. In the 24 hours format, we call it 1749 hours. Universal Time Coordinate, UTC. Universal Time Coordinate or Coordinated Universal Time is a standard time based on the rotation of the Earth. As countries follow different time zones, aircraft use the standard time to log the required data. Airport of departure and arrival follow UTC. Indian Standard Time or IST. The time difference between UTC 
and IST is plus 5 hours 30 minutes, which means that India is 5 hours and 30 minutes ahead of UTC. For example, if a flight is to depart from any airports in India at 10 a.m., it means the actual departure time in UTC is 0430 hours. Please note, in India, the UTC date will change only when the Indian Standard Time is 0530 hours. Though the local date has changed, any flight arriving or departing before Indian Standard Time 0530 hours means the flight date is of the previous day. Hope this online tutorial has illuminated your interest in the airline industry and please feel free to pen in your comments and queries to guarantee improved assistance. Thank you.